Movie yeah. Reviews. Frozen 2, otherwise known as Too Fast 2 Frozen. I feel like I need to start off with a big disclaimer because I am a male in my late 20s reviewing Frozen 2. However, I don't think this is the case because I do like a lot of Disney animated movies. Moana, I think, is a fantastic movie. The first Frozen is good. I think it's slightly overrated, but it's still a good movie to watch, I suppose. But just know that this movie was not made for me. It's an animated movie made for children and families, and so I only have a certain limit of how much I'm going to be able to enjoy this. If we're doing this whole comparison game, it was not nearly as good as the first Frozen, and let me start explaining why. Now, the thing that the first Frozen movie did so well was establish this universe, establish this character, this music, and the second Frozen tries to do all of that in a continued story, but falls short on almost every single aspect. First, the characters. They're all returned. You got Anna, you got Elsa, you got Olaf, you got Kristoff and Sven. The whole game's back together, except not all of them are really in this movie. I love the relation between Anna and Elsa. I think it's very charming. I think it's a good example for kids to look up to, especially females with dealing with siblings or just having these female role models. I think they're great, and I think the relationship in this movie is just as good as the first one. Kristoff doesn't have enough to do. He's seen as just this side character to enhance the story of the main characters, Anna and Elsa, which I don't have a problem with because if anything, it's kind of nice to see a male in this role because usually that's where the female is, right? The female is the one who's just kind of there to support the male and doesn't really have their own story. That's Kristoff in this movie, and that's fine because that's all he's supposed to do in this movie. However, if you're looking for more from him, yes, he gets a song, but that's about it. Olaf, surprisingly, was pretty quiet in this movie, and I'm fine with that. I honestly am not a huge Olaf fan. I don't really understand the love for him, but it seems like a lot of people like him. So it was kind of surprising to see him not have hardly anything to do in this movie. Now, he did have a couple funny lines, and... I smiled, I laughed, he had a couple of good jokes, but overall, like, he didn't do anything in this movie. So let's get into the music, because when you think of Frozen, you think of so many amazing songs. You got Love is an Open Door, you got Do You Want to Build a Snowman, um, what's it called? The, um, uh, for the, for the first time, for the first time in forever, that's what it's called. And of course, Let It Go, one of the biggest Disney songs of all time. Every single one of those songs is better than every song in Frozen 2. I think the one that people are talking most about is Kristoff's song. It's kind of like this 80s, 90s boy band montage parody. And yeah, it's pretty funny, but it's only a parody. Beyond that, it's not a great song. Now, the big showstopper is supposed to be Into the Unknown. And yeah, that's like the best song in the movie, but even that is not better than any of the songs I listed from the first Frozen. So yeah, it's kind of unfortunate because that's a big part of what people wanted to see. And I think people are going to enjoy this music, but it's definitely not going to stand the test of time like the first Frozen did. And you got the storyline. The storyline is actually pretty interesting. It introduces a lot of new characters and new concepts that were explored in the first movie, such as how Elsa got her powers and what happened to the parents because they kind of just brushed over that in the first movie. So for people who are like, I want to see more of this universe, I want to understand more about these characters and the history, of Arendelle, you're gonna get that. That is very evident in this movie. Plotline from INDB reads, Anna, Elsa, Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven leave Arendelle to travel to an ancient autumn-bound forest of enchanted land. They set out to find the origin of Elsa's powers in order to save their kingdom. And so yeah, that's kind of the gist of the movie, right? They find out more about her powers, they find this new land, they explore like what happened to my parents because the movie starts off with their parents explaining to them this whole story and this adventure just leaves from there. So as a movie to fill in the blanks and questions that people have about this world, it does a decent job. However, that's kind of all it does. It never really goes too many interesting places, and I think the biggest problem that it has is it relies too much on magic. Now, I am a big believer in not using magic in movies to break the rules that you have set up. I think it's a cheat code, and this movie struggles to not do that. That's usually my biggest problem when it comes to movies like the Harry Potter franchise, and I know those are beloved movies by so many people, but I have issues with some of them because that's kind of the solution to a lot of these issues that the script presents. Here's what happens. We have this problem, so what are we going to do? Let's use this spell. Okay, well, this spell causes this problem, so what are we going to do? Let's use this bigger spell. And so they're just constantly using magic to get themselves out of this predicament that the script brought them into without actually using a real logical way that us as an audience can follow. We're supposed to just believe, like, okay, how are the characters going to get out of this? Oh, well, Elsa has powers. Okay, cool. 
game over. And as an audience member, it's just not interesting to watch movies like that. We want to see these characters use logic and reason and get out of these situations in ways that we can understand, not just saying like, well, she just discovered this new power, so that's it. The day is saved. So it doesn't fully rely on that, but there are a lot of parts where it's like, cool, magic. Why am I watching this? So again, it's just all going to come back to this idea that this movie was not made for me. It just wasn't. I can enjoy this movie, and I I did. It was fine. I'm, I'm not going to revisit it like I would the other Frozen movie, but it's a fine movie. Now, let me just say a quick clarification for my scorekeeping. It's based out of 1 out of 100, but it's more of like a ranking in a way. So I'm comparing these movies to other movies that I've seen. So just because something's like a lower score doesn't mean it's like, oh... It's a 30 out of 100. No, it's just like if I were to, you know, round all my movies into 100 movies, it'd probably fall about 30th on the list. That being said, I'm going to give this movie a 48 out of 100. It's just slightly below average. I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. Follow me on Letterboxd. I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. Yeah. There it is, Frozen 2. Have you seen it? What do you think? Comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you next time.